University of Central Florida uh, in Orlando. Uh, started my career interning and working with the Orlando Magic. Uh, worked with the Washington Wizards and Capitals in DC, minor in sports entertainment uh, for about three and a half years, and then pivoted and spent some time working in collegiate sports, uh, in athletic administration, and coaching as well, working in compliance, uh, working in recruiting. So I've kind of worked in a, in a variety of different roles within sports and business. Um, this has been a good marriage for me because I've always had passion for entrepreneurs and working um, with technology. So it's, I think it's really interesting to see how sports technology is impacting um, the way we consume sports, the way players perform. Um, and it's just, it's, 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 it's fascinating if you follow sports. I know everybody's here is, is, is passionate about sports and innovation. Um, I think it's, it's, really, it's really interesting to see how, the way, how sports is impacting um, uh, for technology is impacting everything that we do uh, in terms of uh, you know consuming and enjoying uh, sports. Okay, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, just how our program works, what, how we review companies. Um, we'll talk a little bit about some of our partners, some of our mentors. Uh, we're a very mentorship driven program, um, and then a little bit more information about our associates and our intern roles, which is uh, how you guys can potentially get involved with what we're doing over the summer. right here in your office, okay? Um, and then Ian, I want to make sure that you guys hear from Ian, because Ian interned with us last summer and went through uh, this program as well, so he can really kind of speak to his experience of working with us, uh, some of the tasks that he was, uh, he participated in, and um, you know, the things that he did kind of on a day-to-day basis and how he's sort of using this as a, as a leveraging point for his own career uh, within sports and, and technology, so. So what is Techstars? So as you heard in that brief intro video, um, the worldwide network that helps entrepreneurs succeed. So we've been around since 2007. Um, you know, we're in about, uh, we run programs in about 15 or 16 different countries right now. We have about 52 accelerators. Um, an accelerator is, think of that as like a 13 week boot camp, right, for entrepreneurs um, that helps them scale and grow their businesses. Uh, go ahead. So, as mentioned, founded in 07 by two uh, serial entrepreneurs, uh, David Brown, David Cohen. Uh, they felt like at that time there wasn't really a mentorship driven program out there. They were sort of trying to figure all this stuff out uh, as they went along as young entrepreneurs. Um, so they said, well, we have an extensive network. Let's create a, an actual program that focuses on helping entrepreneurs grow their business, but through mentorship. Right? So through collaboration, through idea sharing, uh, knowledge sharing, and that sort of was the, the genesis that created Techstars. So we have over 10,000 mentors across the network. Uh, as mentioned, we're in about 15 different countries. We run programs that are both uh, vertically agnostic right, and more category specific. So vertical agnostic is kind of how it sounds. Uh, we have programs in a lot of the established markets in Boston, um, San Francisco, LA, New York, where you could be starting a business in, in sort of any particular area. You can apply to Techstars, you can get accepted, so you can have a company that's maybe in sports, a company that's in the ag tech or fintech or, or whatever the case might be, healthcare. Um, then you have the other half of the, of the pie is more category specific, uh, which is what we're doing in sports technology. So all the companies that we help accelerate and grow are in the sports tech space. Now, I'll talk a little bit more about what sports tech is to just give you an idea um, about you know, some, of the, some of the genres that we get very excited about. Okay, okay so four connected divisions. So you know, we're gonna talk more about the Mentorship Driven Accelerator Program, but there are also other connected divisions within Techstars. Techstars has their own studio where they're incubating ideas. They have their own fund um, where they're investing in companies as well, investing in a couple hundred companies each year. Um, and of course, an innovation program. We do a lot of startup weekends. We did one I think, two months ago in Louisville. Um, so Techstars is, is very active in that in the entrepreneurial world, uh, really all around the world. Go ahead. Results and benefits. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, yep. So it's just just some more information. So you know, you can see just by the numbers, some of our more popular companies. You guys heard of Class Pass? Of course, everybody's heard of Uber. That's a bit misleading. They didn't go through Techstars, but we invested in them early, so throw that up there. 
Uh, pill pack, which was bought by Amazon, I think, for what, a couple million dollars. So those are some of the more notable ones. Um, go ahead. All right, so a little bit of uh, just what we did in our first year. So we had eight different cities represented, including a company from Moscow. So these are just some of the logos from uh, our first 10 companies. And Ian spent a lot of time uh, working with our company from Los Angeles, Pistol Light, and you can talk a little bit more about what they do as an athleisure brand. Um, go ahead. So these are our partners. So again, we're a consortium program. So um, you know, when, when the whole sort of rationale, the logic for this program, um, Scott Dorsey, if you guys are familiar with Scott, Scott uh, sold his company Exact Target to Salesforce for quite a lot of money. And um, he, was a, he was a real reason why we're here today. And uh, Steve Simon, who owns the Indiana Pacers, um, and they're both heavily involved in, in what we're doing. Uh, they wanted Indianapolis uh, to be at the cutting edge of technology and innovation, but specifically with a focus on sports because Indianapolis is such a great sports town. Um, and meanwhile, while this conversation was going on, uh, our managing director, Jordan, uh, was really pushing Techstars uh, to focus on a sports-specific dedicated accelerator because prior to last year, uh, there was not a, a sports-centric program out there. Uh, so Jordan took his first company, Coach Up, which is a marketplace for private coaches and clients to connect through Techstars Boston, uh, but that didn't have a sports focus. So and, and when I say sports focus, it means a lot of the mentorship, a lot of the workshops, uh, a lot of the VCs and the investors um, weren't really sports centric. They were investing in early stage companies, but not with a focus on, on sports tech. And they, they weren't very proficient in that space. Well, fast forward a couple of years and here we are now with really a sports-centric accelerator surrounded by uh, mentors, and I'll, I'll touch on them in a second, um, that are very active all over the sports marketplace. So, but, uh, sorry, uh, we have one more. All right, so just, just a sense, our other partners, so IMS and IndyCar, so the Motor Speedway, uh, the Sports Corp here, Indiana Sports Corp, 50 South Capital, which uh, is the next level fund. So if you see signs for the next level fund around town, it's, the, uh, it's a $250 million venture arm here in the state of Indiana. And so they're, uh, they're heavily invested in what we're doing as well, trying to grow and develop uh, our ecosystem here in uh, Indianapolis. Go ahead. Um, so we've got cut off a little bit here, but this is just uh, some of our, our mentors. So, so you know, we're, we're targeting uh, folks at all the major leagues. Uh, so the NBA, the NFL, Major League Baseball, NHL, MLS, like we have folks from all of those leagues uh, involved in what we're doing. Um, we have a number of professional athletes that are investing in early stage uh, tech companies. Um, we have a number of VCs that focus not only on sports tech, but just generally seed stage companies. Um, you have a couple sports specific companies. You have, of course, everyone's heard of StubHub, FanDuel in the sports uh, betting space. A couple other companies, Shock Tracker, which is a company based out of Kansas City and their founders is a mentor with us. So, you know, we, we really try to surround our, our 10 companies with folks that can really help grow their businesses in multiple different ways. Okay, okay just a quick uh, snapshot of that was us at, was it the Indians game, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was us at, so just managing director, so Jordan, um, again, two-time founder, took his first company through Coach Up, uh, was co-founder of a company called Draft that sold three years ago, I think for about $48 million to uh, Patty Power Betfair which is a, uh, the largest sports betting company in Europe, and they recently uh, merged with, uh, with DraftKings. So, uh, so he's very experienced. He you know, was a founder in Techstars, was a mentor for Techstars, and now he is uh, our managing director, and both he and, and myself help really run the program and execute the program uh, from a strategic level. So, Okay, so how it works. So what is it? Okay, this all sounds great, right? But what the hell is it? <laughs> so it's a 13 week, three month program um, that has kind of a different theme to each stage, if you will. So the, the first month is really focused on mentorship. At the beginning, it talked a little bit about us being a mentorship driven program. Um, we run a program called Mentor Madness, which is almost like a, a speed dating event where all 10 of our founders um, will have up to nine, 10 meetings per day, 20 minute quick meetings with mentors to figure out uh, if there's any there, there, right? And can, can these particular people help me in any way, shape, or form? Maybe it's product specific, right? Maybe it's something strategic, like go to market strategy. Maybe it's fundraising. Maybe it's, maybe it's not even them. Maybe it's someone within their network, right? Uh, 
right, that could potentially help, help grow their business. Um, so the goal is let's get our founders in front of as many people that are fluent in this space and that can potentially help steer us in the right direction for our business. And a lot of our companies are very early, right? You understand, like they're very, very early on. They, they have an idea, they have a small team in place. You know, maybe they've raised a little bit of capital, you know, 50K, 50 to, anywhere from 50 to 250K, uh, a lot of friends and family. Maybe they have an investor, maybe a, it's a small board of advisors. Um, maybe there's a product in market, maybe they have a couple of customers, usually not paying customers. Um, so, so these folks are still kind of very, very <coughs> And so all the ideas that they kick around is you've heard the term like iteration and pivoting. There's a lot of that that goes on throughout the first three weeks because they're getting all of these ideas, right? It's almost overloading at first because it's like, oh yeah, what do I do? I have to, maybe I'm going after the wrong customers, right? Maybe my whole go-to-market strategy is completely off. Or maybe this isn't the company that I think I, I want to pursue, right? We, we had a company last year that literally changed their entire brand. They changed the name of the company, uh, which, is, which is common. So that kind of leads into month two, which is uh, more focused on, okay, we've got all this, this information, we've got all this, I, this idea generation. Now let's put it into practice and let's execute. Let's execute, let's start to grow, let's start to focus on building this business. Uh, so really MVP and growth and, and, and getting a product out there, start to acquire some customers, really start to, to just go heads down on, uh, on execution. Now, Throughout this second month, we also sprinkle in a number of workshops as well. So we'll bring folks in uh, that target specific areas, whether it's how to use how to use data in decision making. It could be a customer acquisition workshop. It could be fundraising. It could be understanding your KPIs, right? So we, it, it, and a lot of it depends on where our companies are at. We try to structure these workshops based on, on where our companies are at in their life cycle, if that makes sense. Uh, we also bring in a number of founders, experienced entrepreneurs uh, that have built and scaled companies to really share their stories and, hey, these are the do's and the don'ts. This is my journey. Um, and those folks will meet with, with all of our companies individually as well. Um, and, then, and then month three, that kind of uh, leads into month three, which is really focused on um, demo day and then really ramping up uh, with all, all 10 of our companies, getting them ready to present um, in front of three or 400 investors. So if you guys watch Shark Tank, right? So think of that, but on a much larger scale. So we do it at the NCAA headquarters right here in town, and we invite VCs from you know, really all over the world to come and uh, hear our company's pitch. And it's a, nice, it's a nice culmination of all the work that they've done throughout the 13 weeks. Because you gotta remember, that you're getting about a, a year's worth of work done in 13 weeks. So it's really, it's, it's, it's iteration, it's execution at a very high clip, okay? Okay, this is the investment deal. Don't need to spend too much time on this, but uh, the, the basic gist is a lot of these companies uh, are bootstrapping their, their businesses, so that, again, they haven't raised a lot of capital. And here's the thing, <laughs> in this space, if you don't have money, your company dies very quickly. Um, you don't die, but your company dies. <laughs> so it's like, how can we continue to, to, to move forward? Well, that's where we come in. So we infuse each of our 10 companies with capital, uh, so it's a 20K for 6% common, uh, not preferred. So again, we try to be founder focused, founder first, and then the 100K convertible note. So, and most companies will take that note, um, and it converts, I think, on a $3 million valuation at five folks can make that. So, whatever, you need to know that. Uh, but the, the, the big, the, I guess the big takeaway here, though, is we have an equity back guarantee. So, in investing, right, if I invest in your company, okay. That's, I own part of your company now. I own equity in your company, right? You can't, I can't necessarily give that back to you. What we do here is we say, well, if you go through the 13 weeks and you, if you as a founder come back to us and say, hey, I really didn't get anything out of this program. It's kind of a waste of time. We'll, we will give you the 6% of your company back. That's how confident we are that we can really help these, these young companies grow and scale. So unheard of in investing, but it's, it's again, something that Techstars is really focused on. So we want to be that program, that, that mentorship program that can help founders. So, right in. Okay. Uh, so what we look for, so this is just in terms of how we source, of, oh, so okay, so the next question, how do you find companies? Like, what's the, what's the right company for a Techstars program? Um, so, okay, this is just some information. So, ideally, we like anywhere from 2 to 20 employees, but we, we typically don't like sole founders because um, 
it's, 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 it's tough when you're dealing with just one person. It's hard to execute at, 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 a, at a high rate in what we're doing. Ideally, we want a company that has a CTO, someone that can focus on the technical aspect and build out uh, your, your technical piece of your company while, you're, you know, while the CEO is taking all these mentor meetings. Um, again, we have pre-product, pre-revenue, all the way to we had a company, Pistol Lake, the one that you worked with that was doing over a million dollars in ARR. We had a company uh, in Nashville, a ticketing company that raised, I think, a, a million and a half going into the program, which is a lot for, for a seed stage accelerator. Uh, but they were using us for, for different reasons, right? Maybe it was strategic channels, maybe it was access to a talent force so they could build up their team. Um, so, you know, so you see from pre-seed to seed all the way to Series A. But the focus most of the time, guys, is on these early stage companies. So when we're recruiting, these are the things we look for. Um, you see team listed on there three times. It's actually not a mistake. Uh, we're very focused on the founders and the teams, and so that plays a real big role into how we suss out the companies that we want to take into our program. Um, we tend to feel as though we're investing in a team, and if the team doesn't hit on this particular idea, if they're a really strong team, they're gonna be successful, they're gonna figure it out, they're gonna find a way to make it work. You know, are they coachable? Can they take constructive criticism? Much like when you're you know, putting a team together on the field or on the court, right? Very similar in that sense. Um, and then market progress idea, of course, but you know, it's, it's important to figure out, is this a, does this thing have some legs? Is, is, what's, the, you know, what's the addressable market here? Is this, can this thing be big? a venture type of business. Um, and then, you know, we, we, we try to draw the line between, okay, can we find founders that are visionaries, but also can execute? And sometimes that can be mutually exclusive, which is problematic. Uh, but if you can find someone that can do both of those, you, know, you get yourself a real winner. So, ready? Okay, so just kind of a broad view of sports tech. So that's kind of how we look at companies. So. In the sports tech space, these are some of the more popular categories. Uh, so obviously you can see ticketing and fan engagement are, are huge right now. Um, you know, our best company this past year was a ticketing company, and um, they're, they're crushing it right now. We're absolutely crushing it, and you know, because a lot of, I mean, think about it, all these major sports franchises, the, the number one way that these teams drive revenue is ticket sales. You can talk all you want about media rights and sponsorships and TV deals, and that's, that's great. But if you don't have butts and seats, you, you don't have a business model anymore, right? So, so ticketing is still really important. Uh, sports, bed, sports betting, Indiana just legalized it, so yay, that's good for us. <laughs> um, esports is a, is a growing, growing space. So you guys, you know, play esports and involved with the gaming. Okay, not a game crowd, it's all right. Uh, health, nutrition, fitness, uh, very popular area. You guys familiar with Peloton? Okay, so we had a company uh, last year on cohort um, that was almost a Peloton, but for rowing, right? So rowing machines instead of biking. So, and they're doing, uh, they're crushing it right now. I think they just raised 750 k So, um, athlete safety, performance, media content. You can see up there. Sponsorship brands, obviously big too. Maybe VR, AI, uh, and sort of arena. And tech. So this is just like a snapshot of, of our market um, and what we're targeting. Okay, all right. Get to the best part. So. How could you potentially get involved if it's something you guys are interested in? If you're interested in, interested in innovation, in tech, in sports, um, it's a really unique opportunity to kind of get a glimpse of all of those areas. Uh, so obviously, like, you could spend three months working with 10 companies, 10 really good companies that are all sort of operating in different areas of sports technology. Um, you know, really kind of working with them throughout their progress and understanding their team dynamics. Um, Indiana's new ecosystem, like we're not, we're not Silicon Valley here, we're not Boston, we're not in Austin, but it we're growing, growing fast. And uh, we have a lot of buy-in, there's a lot of collaboration here in what we're trying to do. So it's really exciting to be in this ecosystem right now, especially given our focus, which is sports technology. Um, obviously see our tech stars run. I think the other thing that is really valuable for, for, for you guys is like your network which, as you, if you want to work in sports, which I'm assuming that most of you guys want to build a career in sports in, in some way, shape, or form, it's all about networking. It really is. Um, I learned that the hard way, uh, but once I was able to appreciate that and get better at it, like the opportunities just start flooding in. Um, and this is a great way for you guys to really build out your network in sports. Uh, you're gonna meet a ton of people over the summer uh, that are all doing really cool things in sports tech, in sports business, 
spheres. So, ready? so what do our associates slash interns do? Uh, after Techstars, lots of different avenues you guys can take. Um, you know, Ian, for example, is, is, is going to be working with us this year um, as an associate. He's going to be supporting us. Um, you know, he went from an intern to an associate, right, which is a paid position versus the internship, which is just more of a, of a credit-related position, um, college credit, that is. Uh, you know, you could build your own company. We have a lot of folks that go through that are aspiring entrepreneurs. They kind of get this one-on-one -on -one blueprint, like, how am I going to build my company now? Now I know what to do. Now I don't know what to do. You're in common mistakes, right? I have a whole book of investors now that I can, I can tap into. I have other entrepreneurs that can use as advisors. Um, we had seven job-seeking interns and associates last year. Six of them were hired. So, you know, joining a Techstars company, one of our portfolio companies, because when these companies finish the program, they're, they're ready to hire and they're ready to really start to grow. And a lot of that involves getting really good people on their teams. Um, so it was great to see that, and I'm really proud of that because um, our folks, and we had a lot of folks from, from your program that worked with us last year that did a great job. That are all you know employed now and working out of tech source companies or affiliated partners. So uh, you join another company, right? Uh, whether it's a mentor's company, as I mentioned, you want to work for the NBA league office, great. We've got a ton of contacts here. You want to work for a specific team, great. We'll we'll call them up for you, right? So it just this opens up a whole avenue, I think, for uh, folks that are interested in working in that sports business or sports tech landscape. Um, Obviously, partners. You want to work for the Colts or Pacers? Great. Like, we'll call the freaking owners of the team. We'll put a good word in for you. Like that's it's it's a very collaborative environment, um, and you get to meet a ton of people through the process. So, actually, from a from a building out your own network perspective, this is a really unique opportunity. You're not just getting buried in a closet like you do at you know some of these other big corporations that have summer internship programs where you're just going to get lunch from people and then you put on your resume. And it's like, oh great, I worked at Morgan Stanley. Well, you didn't do anything, you didn't learn anything. Right here, you are a member of the team. You are working on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let Ian jump in and talk a little more about what he did, but you are a valuable member of that team throughout the 13 weeks, so much so that you know a lot of our interns and associates are then brought on board full time because they know the business, they've worked with the product, they understand the, the market strategy, the customers, and it's very sort of seamless transition and join Techstars, like we're growing really fast. We just opened up three more accelerators. We had an energy accelerator in Alabama, of all places. We have an uh, ag tech program in Iowa. We just opened up a program with uh, Melinda Gates and Pivotal Ventures Group in DC, focused on uh, longevity, so uh, elder care, so healthcare, that space. Um, so uh, real, you know, if, if you like Techstars, if you like what we do, what we stand for, what our mission value is, um, opportunity to work. Because well, we are, uh, you, know, you get entered into that talent pool as an intern or associate immediately, so you'll get access to all these different job postings. So, to expect, yeah, I didn't do this, but it's just, it's, it, again, it's a really, it's a unique opportunity. You work hard, um, you dive in deep with, with our companies, and uh, I think it's, it's just a great opportunity to really build up your breadth of knowledge in, uh, in this space. So, and, uh, yeah, we look for like skills, experience, and board. But I think more so for us, it's like someone who's really passionate and really wants to jump in the, into what we're building here. Um, you know, I have people that, and, and you know, Ian can talk about um, about again his sort of his role with, with Pistol Lake and what he did. But you know, Ian's a perfect example of someone that like no task was was too big for Ian. He jumped in um, head first and supported all ten of our companies so much so that he's actually still working. With with Pistol Hank right now, still running your social media stuff, um, which is which is just a testament to him and his work ethic. Uh, but it, again, it's a, it's a unique, very hands-on experience. So if it's one of those things where you, know, you want your your internship to just be sort of like, you know, bury me in the back, and I'm just going to use this as a resume builder, that's that's not what you, you get at, at TechStars. Um, like you're going to be on the front lines. You're going to be representing your companies. You're going to be in the investor meetings. You're going to be working closely with the founders. Uh, helping with investor decks, helping with market marketing strategies. Um, it's, it's a very hands-on opportunity. I, I think it's very unique. So, I think that's it. And then these are just some of our roles that, uh, that we're offering. So, uh, you know, design, uh, 
uh, sort of more business development, growth focus. We have a uh, technical associate, which is kind of more specific to someone that has experience in, in engineering, operations, um, and then a number of internships. We have multiple internships uh, available as well. So that's us at Demo Day. That was uh, at the NCAA HQ. So and, yeah, that's, that's me when I have beer. <laughs> <laughs> so pour some out for the <laughs> And that's uh, that's it. So our, our just some important dates. So we start, guys. So we're a, we're a summer program, which is which is pairs nicely, I think, uh, with what uh, you know where you guys are at, right? Because you guys are not going to be in class during the summer. Maybe some of you will be. Um, but I know we had a number of folks from from this particular program that uh, supported us last year and did a great job. Uh, so we start June eighth. We run until September third, which is where uh, where demo day occurs, and that's right here. Great, so let me just stop briefly, and then I, I'd like to, Ian, you know, I'd like to kind of bring you up and just have you yeah. share a little bit about your, your own uh, experience. But any questions before we, before Ian kind of talks about his journey and his experience with us, anything about the program or roles? Yes, is this program just like a one-year thing, or is it like every year will be a thing? You know, yep, good question. So uh, last year was our first year, so this will be our, our second cohort. Um, we're going to be here at least for one more year, but probably more. A lot of it's negotiating with our partners on, on terms because the partners invest a lot of capital into the actual execution and funding of the program. Um, so if they feel as though we're adding value uh, to this ecosystem here in Minneapolis, then they'll re up us. So um, yeah, so we're hoping to be here for at least another three or four years at, at the very least. So. Anybody else? Yes, sir. What does like a schedule look like as an intern? So like five days a week kind of thing? Or? Yeah, so I'm gonna let Ian talk a little more about that, but I can just, from a high level, um, it's not your typical nine to five. Like we don't expect you to show up and punch a ticket at nine and leave at five. Um, it's very flexible. Uh, we allow a lot of our interns to work remotely if, 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 if that's uh, based on what their schedule is, if they have another job, if they need to earn some, some capital during the summer. Um, a lot of it's based on your relationship with your founder. Uh, because each of our interns will be working very uh, in depth with one particular company, but you'll also have the option to, to jump in other projects with, with uh, different companies as well. Um, I would say like a typical day is like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in the office and Mondays and Fridays, typically working from, from home because most of our companies take those days off. Uh, <laughs> they travel to go. We had, we had, like I said, we had 10 companies from, from eight different cities and, and, and no company from Indiana. So a lot of our companies went home to see their families or their board of advisors or whatever. So it's very flexible. Um, you know, we, we we usually allow our interns to kind of work that out with their with their with their companies. But it's not like nine to five. You know, we don't expect you to be there for eight hours. Anything else? Cool. Okay. Uh, well, I'm going to hand it over then uh, briefly, Ian, if you want to just talk a little bit about your experience, your role, uh, kind of what you learned through the Techstars program, and, and maybe any advice for, for these guys if, 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 uh, if they're interested in kind of doing what, what you did. Yeah, yeah. Good. So I put little notes in my phone. Excuse me. I had another whole slide that I took for you. So, um, so, yeah, so I did the internship with Techstars. It started, um, I thought the way it started kind of told me that this was going to be a little bit different because. Andrew and Jordan, I talked to them. Well, I talked to Andrew on the phone, and then they invited us over for a barbecue on their roof to have uh, an orientation, which I thought was odd. Like, you never go to an orientation for your job and you sit on top of a roof and have a barbecue. So that was pretty cool. Roof is uh, nice, though. Yeah, the roof is great. Uh, <laughs> so we hung out there, and then um, I just remember one of the things that stuck out to me during that was Jordan, who's not here, but uh, Andrew helped with orientation as well. They ran us through it. Um, but they told us, as people who like, have their masters already. They told us like this is basically like you accelerated MBA. If you do this for three months, and you put everything you have into it. Like this can serve as that, and essentially like you grow a network that you don't really need to. Like if you want to pursue your masters, okay, of course go ahead. But like this was like an alternative almost, um, which really worked out for me. And so I kind of bought into that. I thought if I'm here for three months, you know, it's just three months out of my like out of my life, one summer. Like and I worked a lot of jobs uh, outside of this as well, so it was like. If I could just dedicate as much as I could to tech stars and then outside of that I could make money like wherever I needed to. And like that's what I did. And I think that was really like a great um, like a great 
example for what you can do with the program. But uh, in the program, I can't talk enough about like the network you go is just insane. Like uh, like Andrew said, you know, like if, even if you don't want to go on in tech stars, like there's still like if you want to go to the NBA, like they have every connection you could ask for. Basically, like if you want to go to the NFL, they have people you can talk to at the NFLPA. Like if you want to go to the Indians, you know, like they can talk to them as well. Like it's like they meet everybody and know everybody. And um, also just like sitting down and like every day I'm working directly with a CEO or an executive or a founder. And you know, I mean, not to like downplay my other internships, but I mean, I'm sure a lot of you have done them. I know I've seen a lot of you elsewhere like that I've worked too, you know, Indy 11 doing game ops, Colts, Indians, uh, Pacers doing transformation crew. Like everybody here I know has like some type of grind that you're doing. I think if you don't want to be like the equipment manager for the rest of your life, like you know what I mean? Like I, th I don't think everybody wants to do that, and like maybe you do, but like I think like you want to grow in your role, and I think this is the connections that you need to make if you want to grow, grow in your role in general. Um, I know during Mentor Madness that was something that Andrew talked about, and I thought that was just really like a really cool example of what you can get exposed to because you have I want to say there's like eight or nine meetings every day, twenty minute meetings, and there's like little inter sessions for them to kind of relax, but. You know, like I sit down with Scott Dorsey for 20 minutes, like I would have never met this man outside of this program, you know what I mean? This guy has sold his company for like some undisclosed amount of money, but it's a ridiculous amount of money. And you're like, you know, like I've never been around somebody that's like able to give advice on selling a company for millions and millions, you know what I mean? That's, that's just an insane observation. Uh, I don't know, it's just like, it's crazy to think about stuff like that. And then, um, you know, like, it's not just Scott Dorsey, though. Then you have Ryan Vaughn, and then, like, the entire Indiana Sports Corp. You have Carly Irsay. I remember on Demo Day, like, she, like, I had to go and meet up with Carly Irsay, so I was, like, her liaison for Demo Day, like, getting her in there, talking to her. So it's, like, you're meeting all these people, and sure, like, maybe you're just doing something to get them from point A to point B, but, like, there's 20 minutes right there that you can talk to them, network with them, tell them, you know, like, I told Carly, you know, like, oh, I'm one of your interns. And then we talked for, like, 30 minutes instead of her going inside, which, you know, she probably cut your speech, but. <laughs> but <laughs> just little things like that, I think you can really, uh, you can hold on to. And then outside of just the network, you know, I'll, I'll leave that alone. But the work that I actually was doing was so much different. Because, like, working with Indy 11, like, you know, I'm, I'm there, and it's like boots on the ground work. I'm moving stuff all day. Like, a lot of you guys know. Or, like, we're picking up confetti out of when somebody scores a goal. And it's like, that's cool. Like, it's a good stepping stone. And, like, you should definitely do that because it gives you connections. It gives you experience to have, like, how you should act professionally, of course. Like, I think it's a great experience. I'm not downplaying it. But I think this is, like, your next step after something like that. And you can go in there, and I helped run a Kickstarter. I didn't know what a Kickstarter was before I started this. So how many of you know what a Kickstarter is? Anybody? Yeah, so, like, a few of you, a few of you don't. So it's, like, somewhere, you, it's, like, a website you can go to. You can create an idea. You post your idea on there, a product. And then people can fund the idea. If it doesn't get funded all the way, they get their money back. If it does, you can create your product. And it's a great way to like save on uh, like just risk when you're creating a product so you don't have to spend too much because then you know like there is a market for it. It's already funded. We can do this now. Um, so I helped create that. We set our goal at 10000 for like a month. We wanted to raise, raise $10,000. Um, and I got to work with like doing SEO. Uh, I learned Photoshop so I could create GIFs for it. I learned how to, how to create imagery for it all. Um, created video content, reached out to like videographers around LA because that's where they're from, found somebody for them. Um, and then also promoted it just through a bunch of different channels, Instagram, Facebook, just any social media channel and email. Um, and then we ended up raising day, less than 24 hours, we raised our goal. And then by the end of it, by the end of 30 or 30 days, we had raised like 34K or something like that. So like, that's great, you know what I mean? Like I'm an intern and I can put on my resume that I just raised $34,000, three extra the goal that we originally intended for. And like, that's something that you're not gonna get to do with the cult. So you know what I mean? You're gonna talk about how you helped set up like equipment for an event or whatever the case is, but you're not gonna be like, yeah, I raised capital for a company that only like, this is like a fifth of their revenue for the year, for the year you know what I mean? Like that's, that's ridiculous. Uh, and now like they've put me on to like actually still helping them. And outside of just helping Pistol Lake, um, so I guess I could delve into that. When we started the program, uh, there was 10 interns, 10 companies, so you do the math, everyone wanted to sign the company. Um, but they were judicious in how they did it. You know, they asked us to put our top three that we like, and then based on our top three companies, we got to choose, or they would kind of like choose where the best fit was for us. And so I ended up with Pistol Lake. Um, they're an athleisure brand. This is actually one of their shirts. Um, I think you're wearing one too, right? Yeah, yeah, Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same. So uh, it's cool. Like this, this shirt's called U Day. It's made out of recycled water bottles and eucalyptus. 
um, little plug there, I guess, for us. But like, <laughs> aside from that, like, I don't, I don't know. Like, you wouldn't think of this like, in, in, in like, I don't know. This, I wouldn't think to work retail when I'm going into like a sport venture, or, like a sport uh, tech accelerator. But this fit in perfectly. Like, we started talking to sports teams. We figured something out with IMS this year where we're gonna probably do like some type of VIP shirts with them. Um, so there's another mentor. I got to sit down with. Uh, um, Doug. Doug Bowles. Yeah, Doug Bowles. And then, uh, you know, Scott Dorsey and Cynthia. Lucius or Lucius. Lucius. Cynthia. Yeah. Lucius. Yeah, and uh, Matt Mendrum from uh, their marketing department as well. So, like, having all of those people in a room, you know what I mean, sitting down and talking, like, that was that was pretty surreal. And I was able to tell, you know, Doug Bowles that I ran, like, social media for them with Eric and Sean for, like, a week or something. You know what I mean? And so it's, like, little connections, and then he would talk to me after. And I think, like, that helped me grow so much, and then now I'm helping with Matt Mendrum figuring out stuff through Pistol Lake so they can create shirts um, and like um, for actual IMS, which will be huge for us. I guess we're a startup, you know what I mean? So to get our name in somewhere that has 500,000 people wanting like 100 shirts, that's huge. Um, so I think there's just there's so many different things you can do. Um, and then I guess day to day tests, you guys kind of are probably wondering about a little bit. Um, that's where it's a little more confusing, I think, because. At a lot of places you go and you know like, okay, from 10 to 12 maybe you have like meetings and then like uh, one to three you have to go and do this like stock stuff. But here it was like, you show up and like, it's really just what you can make of it and that's what they preached at the beginning, like what were you gonna make of it? So I would go to, you know, our CEO. I asked him at the beginning, but I, I, I think that it's important that you don't just like ask them what to do every day because they don't wanna tell you what to do every day. They're a CEO or a founder. Like they have their own job, they have a billion things going on. Um, and so it's like, Use your intuition and know what to do next, or like kind of what's you know start to like expect what you can do to help them. Um, and I think that was really important in my role. And I think that's what probably separated me from like a lot of other interns. But there were some really great other interns too that got jobs. But um, I think just expecting like what could be next is really important. So um, I'm trying to think, for instance, um, yeah. I, <laughs> Kind of drawing a blank on that. I don't know. So there, there was a lot of different projects that they would have going. But I remember, like when I first started, Ryan, he was the CEO of Pistol Lake, or is the CEO. And instead of just going to him and being like, "Hey, man, like I'm Ian. What do you want me to do?" It was like I came to him and I was like, "Hey, I looked through your guys' website. I checked out your social media. Here was like a list of things that I thought could be improved. Uh, I thought like this was a list of things I really liked. And do what you want with it. But here's my two cents on that. And he really liked that. And then he was like, "Cool. Like, go give me like." A report on the thing that you would improve and then come back to me with that instead and so then I went with that and I think that's just like a better way to introduce yourself to somebody that you're gonna work for as opposed to being like hey man like I don't really know what I'm doing what do you want me to do and um, but I just helped that I held on to that so the days that Ryan didn't have something for me to do if he's like you can go home um, well I needed $400 for my internship anyway so I was gonna be there regardless but I was like all right, if I'm not helping Ryan, like, let me go talk to one of the other nine companies that is trying to start a company right now and see if they need help and so then Inevitably, I ended up helping with Six Man. I connected Dr. Sherman with some people uh, that needed help in the staff department. Um, and I reached out to Pierce. He kind of helped me do like some surveys for people to kind of get a market in the industry analysis for a lot of our uh, companies. Yeah, man, I think just really taking advantage of being there for all three months, being there as much as you can, and diving into everything. Like, if you don't want to just set up equipment and set set up like little pieces of an event for your college internship, like this is a great way to learn a lot more um, in a better position, I think. So, any questions on that? No? no? Cool. Thanks. No, thank you, Ian. Appreciate it. Yeah, just uh, it made me think of one funny story. So we had a, a, one of our interns, a kid named Max, who actually applied to Techstars as a founder, but you know, just wasn't, it was just too early, so it wasn't ready, but it was very impressive they said, well, look, we're not going to take it as a company, but uh, we want you to be involved in the program, so I want you to be an intern, we have a ticketing company, it would make sense, you, you, you are pretty knowledgeable in that space. So whatever, so we hire them, we bring them on, we hook them up with our ticketing company from Nashville, and uh, he was great. I mean, to the extent to which they offer a full-time gig, he's still in school, he graduates in May, he's moved down to Nashville and worked But, um, the, as the story goes, I was talking to their CEO, this is after the program ended, you know Max has been great, and he going to say something funny, he said, I was late for an investor call. This is the CEO. Uh, you know, because they're all trying to raise money, so they're all talking to investors, and 
And he goes, uh, when I joined the call, he said, I was ready to apologize to the guy that I was going to be late. But I heard, you know, conversation going on, and it was Max, my intern, that was actually talking about our company to this particular investor. So here's, a, here's an intern taking a, a, an investor call with a VC, right? He's one of them that writes checks for you know, millions of dollars. And you get an intern talking about a company at a very high level. And Steven, the CEO, was just like, ah, I just, I shut up and I just let him do it because he was crushing it. He was doing as good a job as I could do. Um, that's what you get. Yeah, that's the type of access that you get, I think. That's the script work stuff. We went to Heritage Group, which is like uh, up north, and we went and did like a, what was that event that we went to where they had the tech size companies there? Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, that was the, the next level fund that was yes, the yeah, so, so we went there and like there's a lot of investors there, people that are like interested in tech stars, people that ran programs. Um, and yeah, to that same degree, like there was some guy from Carmel that I ended up talking to that reached out to our CEO afterward and was like, Hey, we're really interested in talking to you guys, but like I was the one to talk to him and I gave him like my CEO's card, like I would have never thought that like, hey, I'm gonna go help you get an investment, like, I was just explaining the company. But I think like like you said, like being there and just like filling in whenever needed. And actually understanding your company really well is also like super valuable. Yeah. So um, again, I, I don't want to inundate you guys with information, but if, if you can just indulge me, I'd love to take maybe 10 minutes and just go through the room. If you guys can just introduce yourselves, uh, your name, where you're from, and kind of what you want to do. Uh, that would just be helpful for, I think, for us to just get a sense of kind of where you want to take your career. Um, and then 